Hey everyone, this is Jason from EskimoTV.net and today I'm going to be talking about a little film that I'm not sure a lot of people have heard of. It's called Spider-Man No Way Home. It's directed by John Watts and it stars Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Benedict Cumberbatch. This review will be spoiler free. The only thing I'm going to talk about plot wise are things that have been mentioned through the trailers that have been released through Sony. If you don't want to know anything and you've happened to have magically avoided watching those trailers, then I probably, if I were you, wouldn't be looking at a movie review because typically we like to talk a little bit about what this film's about. And so I will be just unveiling what we've learned through trailers, talking about my general thoughts on the film without mentioning any big spoilers. And so let's go ahead and dive right into it. Spider-Man No Way Home picks up where the last film left off. Jameson from the Daily Bugle, portrayed wonderfully by J.K. Simmons, is declaring that Spider-Man is a menace to society. We definitely haven't heard him say that before, but this time, obviously, if you've seen Far From Home, spoilers, he says that Peter Parker is the man behind the mask, and Peter's life drastically changes because of people finding out who he is. He reaches out to Doctor Strange to try and make people forget that he's Spider-Man, but he tries to have some stipulations like, well, I don't want this person to forget, and I don't want this other person to forget because it'll make my life chaotic. And it causes the spell to go a bit wonkers, and unfortunately, a lot of craziness unfolds. As it's been revealed in the trailer, several villains return due to this spell going wrong. Alfred Molina returns as Doc Ock, Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin, Thomas Hayden Church as the Sandman slash Flint Marco, Ron Ifans as Kurt Connors slash the Lizard, and Spider-Man is overwhelmed and he has to figure out what to do with these new foes that are now involved in their universe. This is a really great film that most people are going to enjoy and you're going to love if you're a fan of Spider-Man, particularly past installments with these new villains being involved. The stories from the past definitely get more depth added to them, specifically these villains, and I like what they do. It's something that has not been done before. It's very unique. The narrative is very upbeat, it's very clear, it's communicated in a very compellingly and sophisticated manner. The screenplay captured my attention from beginning to end. Tom Holland does a magnificent job playing a Peter Parker that is relatable, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And this movie has a lot to like. There's a lot of action scenes that don't overstay their welcome. It is not a hollow film that just has the action. Characters have development. There's a growth with each of them. The characters from the past films have depth that I was surprised added to their films. This movie is a technical masterpiece. The production design, the cinematography, the visual effects are all amazing to look at. There's a specific scene where Doctor Strange is in what's called the mirror dimension, and whoever worked on this piece did an outstanding job. It is the standout of the film on a visual perspective. It is a lot of beautiful CGI, geometric eye candy that is a work of art. The score composed by Michael Gacchino was excellent, very fitting for the film. It added suspense, dread, and thrills, which is what this type of film needs. Additionally, there's really good themes that kids can latch on to and some really heavy things that I think were handled in a way that still keeps this a very family-friendly film. Even though the death penalty isn't talked about, what is talked about is do, should we give these villains that come back into this world second chances? There is a lot though that you can nitpick, like would anyone really do that? Would anyone go to such great lengths to try to find a redeemable quality in this person? It's definitely admirable and I think that is the reason why I found it to be dismissive why Peter Parker or Tom Holland makes some of the decisions that he makes, but 
It makes you raise an eyebrow if someone would truly go through the great lengths that he goes through to redeem a character that has caused such awful havoc, or characters, I should say. But that did bother me a little bit, but once you dismiss it and realize that Spider-Man's just a way better person than I am and is gonna go through great lengths to do what is right, I got over that rather quickly. Lots of characters grow in this film, not only Peter Parker and Ned and MJ, but also Aunt May and Happy, and even some of the villains and new characters that are introduced in this film. Overall, I think this is an excellent film to go watch. You definitely should check it out. This is easily the best superhero film of 2021, although, to me, that wasn't too high of a bar to reach. I thought Shang-Chi was pretty good. But this film takes the cake on that genre. If you're not typically a fan of superhero films, there's still a lot to like with this movie from the characters. If someone's nagging you to go, you should go check it out with them. I think that there's a lot to like. It's definitely an above average film. And if you like this genre in any way, and particularly if you love Spider-Man, you are going to love this movie. I grew up watching Spider-Man, and so this is one of my favorite films of the year, and definitely one of the best superhero films in the past couple of years. That wraps up my non-spoiler review. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. You can also consider subscribing to the channel, youtube.com slash EskimoTV. You can check out my website, EskimoTV.net, where you can find reviews from myself as well as other authors. My name is Jason Escamilla from EskimoTV.net.